Hello and welcome to Making Materials. So today I'm going to show you a game which you can use at Halloween but it's also a very flexible game which can be adapted for other times of the year um, just by changing the characters really. So uh, this is uh, Monster Kart and here you can see the kart racers that I created and these were simply created by finding pictures of real kids in go-karts and then sticking monster heads on them. Um, I've actually already uploaded to the internet uh, the complete set of heads and bodies that I used to make these. So uh, below the video somewhere there will be a link and you can make your own races using those or find your own materials. So the game board looks something like this. We have a start here and we're going this way around the track. The three W markers indicate weapons points. So we're going to need some magnets and we're going to put a random weapons card on each of those points. I'm not going to reveal the weapons just yet uh, as the students wouldn't know what the weapons were at the beginning either. So let's put one on each space like so. Now this is basically a quiz game you can use any type of quiz at all with it. I'm not going to actually have any pre-prepared questions this time. Uh, I really want you to use your imagination with this uh, game. So you could do a Halloween based quiz, questions like what colour is a witch's cat? You could do grammar based questions, just what did you do yesterday to drill past tense? You could really use any kind of questions you want. All you're going to do is let each team choose a racer uh, the cards have magnets on the back, so let's uh, take four racers and put them on the start. Actually, usually I have six teams, but we'll just demonstrate with four today. Put them on the starting place, and then you give them the first question. So let's say the first question is, who is your best friend? And each team in their groups will have a piece of paper. So a different student each time will actually write on the paper the answer and then bring it out to the teacher to check. The teacher will either say it's correct or will show there is a mistake and the students have to return to their team and correct it and come back again. Once they are correct, they can roll the dice and move. So let's say two places for this team. Five for this team. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three. Okay. Two, three. So, they're moving around the track, as you can see. The first team to reach a weapons point, so let's say next round, this team answers the question first and gets first move and gets a roll of one, two, three. Gets three. So they get the weapon card. It wouldn't matter if they got four, five or six, they would still pick up the weapon as they passed and would continue moving. They don't have to stop on the weapon card. That team then gets the weapon. So in this case, and here all my weapons are Halloween themed, so we've got a pumpkin bomb here. I don't explain the weapons at the beginning of the game. I explain the weapons as the students pick them up. So I will just take a large copy of that weapon and we'll put it on the board for everyone to see and then explain it. I've written notes for myself on the back so I can remember. So this one you can play on an empty space and stays there until exploded. Driving over it doesn't explode it but stopping on it does. The team who blows it up goes back to the start. So, this team can play the pumpkin bomb card at any time. They don't have to play it now, but they can play it at any time. The sensible thing to do is to play it behind you. So play it somewhere here, for example, and then hope that one of these teams hits it. To bang, back to the start. If the team rolls over it, one, two, three, that's fine. Only if they stop on this square will they blow up the bomb. 
This is where the fun of this game really comes in, thinking of creative weapons. This is just one idea for a weapon. I will quickly talk you through the six Halloween themed weapons I created. So, we've already seen the pumpkin bomb. So played on an empty square, exploded if another team member stops on that square. Once it's been exploded, it's removed from play. Another possible weapon card they could get is poof. You can play this against any team and switch places with that team. So for example, this team just went back to the start. If they get a poof card, they can play it and they can switch places with this team. Poof. This can also be used defensively. You can use it to dodge a rocket dog attack. So, rocket dog, I'll show you this next one. So this is the rocket dog. The rocket dog attack can be fired forward and goes around the track until it hits the first team it meets. If there's more than one in that square, the user can choose which one it is and the hit team will miss a goal. So for example, if this team fires a rocket dog forward, they have a rocket dog weapon, they can fire it forward and it would hit one of these two teams as they are the nearest ones. They cannot shoot this team. It has to hit the nearest people. But two in the same square, they can choose which team to hit. So let's say they choose this team. This team has to miss one goal because they've been hit. But with the poof, they could avoid that and it would hit the next player up. This one in this case. The Hypnotist, the evil hypnotist. You can play it against any team and they go backwards the next time they roll the dice. So if you played the evil hypnotist on this team, for example, so let's say Dracula team has evil hypnotist, they choose to play it on this team. On their next move, they would go backwards five places. One, two, three, four, five. The dragon-powered car. The dragon-powered car allows you to re-roll one bad dice throw. After the re-roll, you can choose which one to take. So, for example, this team just rolled a five, which was a long way back. If they had the dragon power car, they could roll again. Uh, oh, six. Six is worse, so we'll keep the five. But if they were lucky, they'd get a better roll, like three. I would only go here. The last weapon I created was the spider web. Again, like the pumpkin bomb, you can play it on any empty square and it stays there until it's hit. The first team to hit it must stop moving there until the end of the next round. So, for example, here's a spider web. So, if I play a spider web here, the next team to move, anyone who hits this square on the next go has to stop here. Even if this team rolls a six, one, you have to stop because you hit the spider web. Uh, they roll a five, but one, have to stop. They roll a three, one, two, three, stop here anyway. So you cannot pass it. At the end of the go, when all the teams have moved, the spider web is removed and the next round they can continue as normal. Okay, I realize that was a lot of rules <laughs> in a very short space of time. But again, what I want to stress is this game is flexible. You don't have to use spider webs, dragon powered cars, evil hypnotist, poof, rocket dog, and pumpkin bomb. You can think of your own weapons and your own rules for them. In the description uh, below the video, I will write out these weapons and rules more clearly so you can check them again. Um, if this was being used for a Christmas game, for example, you would simply change this to being Santa Claus, Rudolph, an elf, an angel characters. And you might have, instead of a rocket dog, a, a Christmas tree that you can launch at them, uh, presents that you can drop on the track. 
uh, a candy cane that you can pull players back with, uh, exploding Christmas pudding, uh, angel wings, and deep snow, for example. So you can adapt this to suit any kind of game you want. Essentially, it's just Mario Kart. So you can just do Mario Kart as well and take exactly the weapons from Mario Kart. I made this version just for Halloween, though. How long you play for is up to you. You can do one lap. You can say two laps. You can say let's play until one team laps another team. Uh, you can play for a set time limit. It's very, very flexible, this game. If you don't explain all the weapons at the beginning, which I recommend you don't because the students will not listen to the explanation of all the weapons and will forget about them, the drip feed of new weapons through the game, when they get to a card, and turn it over, oh, this is new weapon, Rocket Dog. And then you explain the Rocket Dog by putting the picture in the center. Uh, this will keep the students interested. So through the game, there are six weapons to discover. It keeps them interested. Once a weapon card has been taken, uh, it will reappear in the spot, or a new weapon will appear in the spot. You wait until the end of a round. So if at the end of the round, there are no races on a W square, then a new weapon will appear. So just take one at random from your pile, in this case it's a rocket dog, and put it there. And it will stay there until collected. Okay, essentially that's it. I mean, it's a basic cart game model. It can be applied, as I said, to any grammar point, um, any type of quiz you want to use, any type of characters, flexible in terms of length, flexible in terms of what weapons you use. Just run with this game. Think of how you can use it and adapt it to what you want to do. So I will be using this at Halloween probably, again. It was very successful last year, and I hope you have fun with it. Okay, please read the description for our easier to digest version of the weapons, and also for a link to images for these heads, these carts, and the weapons pictures that I used. They're all there for you, but feel free to find your own. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Bye.